Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your Sacred Heart in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins, for the intentions of all my relatives and friends, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. Let us pray for the intentions of the Holy Father for the month of February. For the terminally ill, we pray that those with a terminal illness and their families receive the necessary physical and spiritual care and accompaniment. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, the Word of God welcomes you this morning. And as we spend this time with the Lord, as we begin this new day by devoting time to the Lord, let us ask the Lord to be with us, to guide us, to protect us, and most importantly, to lead us on throughout this day that whatever we do, the words that we speak, the actions that we do, that they may all radiate the goodness, love, mercy and peace of the Lord. Many times in life, we are so caught up with the activities, with our work, and because of that, we see that sometimes we find it difficult to recognize the small blessings and the graces that we continuously receive from the Lord. And because of this reason, we sometimes tend to take these things for granted. Therefore, it would be appropriate as we begin today's morning offering that we spend time thanking the Lord. With a generous heart, the Lord has been giving us many graces, many blessings. And therefore, let us thank Him for all that He has done for us. We begin by thanking the Lord for the gift of life, for giving us good talents, abilities. We also thank the Lord for the gift of our family members, friends, relatives, near and dear ones, and all those who have played a very important role in our lives. We see that these individuals have been ones who have shaped us and molded us. We are who we are because of their time, effort and dedication. And therefore, in a very special way, let us pray for them and let us ask the Lord to bless them abundantly in all their endeavors. We also thank the Lord for the various opportunities that He has given us opportunities to make a difference in the lives of others or opportunities to grow, opportunities to become better individuals. 
Similarly, there are also the experiences that we may have. There are some experiences which are really good, which we all want to cherish. But there may also be experiences that have been difficult, that have taught us a lot in life. It is these experiences which may have been harsh, which may have been difficult, but these have made us stronger, have made us understand better our purpose in life. And therefore we shall thank the Lord for giving us these strengthening experiences as well. We also thank the Lord for the gift of this day. We thank Him for protecting us, for guarding us through the night and giving us the gift of this day, a day that will help us to probably complete something that was left incomplete or maybe to do something that may make a difference in the lives of others. And therefore today, in a very special way, let us ask the Lord to be with us and guide us. And now we shall reflect and meditate on Psalm 51. As usual, we shall have a general overview of the Psalm and then we shall gradually enter into the details, trying to see a few verses and what they try to communicate to us. Now, Psalm 51 is a penitential Psalm, which means that it is a prayer of repentance and at the same time, it is also a plea for forgiveness. It is attributed to King David, who wrote it after he was confronted by the prophet Nathan about his sin with Bathsheba. Now, we see that the psalm will begin with David's plea for mercy and forgiveness. And overall, one can say that Psalm 51 is a powerful example of repentance and a plea for God's forgiveness. This psalm reminds everyone that our sin is not just an action, but it is an offense against God's holiness and righteousness. This psalm teaches us to acknowledge our sin, to ask for God's mercy and forgiveness, and most importantly, to seek a clean heart and a renewed spirit. The psalm also will show us the importance of teaching others about God's ways and leading sinners back to Him. And therefore we see that today's psalm is quite rich when it comes to aspects such as repentance and forgiveness. And the psalm begins with David acknowledging that he has sinned against God and therefore he asks the Lord to blot out his transgressions. David confesses that his sin is ever before him and that he knows that he has sinned against God alone. Now moving along to verse number 4, we see that David will recognize that his sin is not just an action, but it's an offense against God's holiness as well as God's righteousness. And he acknowledges that God is just and righteous in his judgment and that he deserves the punishment that he is receiving. And therefore here we see that David takes responsibility for his action and therefore he knows that whatever is happening to him is as a consequence of the sin that he has done. Moving along to verses 6 to 9, here we see that David ask God to cleanse him of his sin and to create in him a clean heart. It is here that David recognizes that only God can wash away his sins and can make him pure again. He also asks God not to cast him away from his presence but to restore the joy of his salvation. Moving on to verse 10, we see that David asks God once again to create in him a clean heart and to renew a spirit within him, a spirit that is right, a spirit that will not mislead. And this is a plea for God to change David's innermost being so that he can live a life that is pleasing to God. And as we move along to verses 11 to 12, David asks God 
not to take his Holy Spirit away from him, but to restore to him the joy of his salvation. He recognizes that his sin has caused him to lose the sense of God's presence in his life and that he longs to be restored to the right relationship with God. And therefore we see that our sin is something that takes us away from God. It drags us away. And therefore the more we sin, the more further we tend to go away. And David explicitly mentions this to the Lord. And then as we move to verses 13 to 17, here we see that David promises to teach others about God's ways and to lead sinners back to him. And here we see that David is not selfish, but he wants to get others to God as well. He wants to share the forgiveness and the repentance of the Lord with others. And therefore this is also part of everyone's mission. Through our words, through our actions, we are called to lead people to God, to help people follow the right path. And we see that here David also recognizes that God does not desire sacrifice, but a broken contrite heart. Therefore, the repentance that we have should be truly from within. That is what the Lord wants us. He doesn't want us to perform rituals, but he wants us to truly repent and mean every word that we say. And here we see that David understand that only through repentance and obedience can anyone find true forgiveness and restoration with God. And we see that the psalm finally ends with a plea for God to bless Jerusalem and to bless his people. David recognizes that his sin has not only affected him but also has affected the entire nation. And therefore he asks God to restore them to a right relationship with him. And so my dear friends, having reflected and meditated on this psalm, there may be some thoughts that would have touched us, some aspects of the psalm, perhaps something on forgiveness or repentance. Let us allow these thoughts to remain with us. And let us now close our eyes and at this morning hour, let us thank the Lord. Let us praise the Lord. Let us glorify the Lord. Loving Father, you have given us this time in the morning. You have been gracious to us. You have given us your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ who has cleansed us from our sins. He has taken away all our sins and he has given us new life. Lord, as you have given us the Holy Spirit, we ask you, Lord, to bless us and to protect us. And for all this, Lord, we thank you, we praise you and we glorify you. You have protected us, Lord, and you have guarded us all through the night. And you have given us this morning hour. For your great love and mercy, O Lord, we thank you. We offer you this day, O Lord, and all that we do. And we ask that you always be with us and accompany us in all our actions. And now, my dear friends, let us spend a few moments in silence, reflecting on any thought from Psalm 51 that would have touched us, something that would have given us a better understanding of ourselves. And let us remain with this thought, asking the Lord to change us, to help us become better individuals.
pray to Saint Michael the Archangel for protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Act of Adoration O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Gertrude Prayer for Souls in Purgatory Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us, and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.